Ever wondered how to create those mesmerizing animations where optics build themselves piece by piece? Or how to add that high-end professional touch to your projects that looks like it took hours to perfect, but actually only takes minutes? In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that using geometry nodes in Blender. All right, let's dive right in and start setting up everything we need for this awesome construction style animation using geometry nodes. We'll begin by adding a cube to our scene, which will scale down to resemble a floorboard. To lock in the scale, press Ctrl plus A and choose Apply Scale. Next, we'll add a bevel modifier to the cube. This will help us see the gaps between the floorboards more clearly. To give the floorboards a realistic look, I'll use Blender Kit to drag in a wood material. After applying the material, I'll make a few quick adjustments to the UV mapping so it looks just right. With our floorboard ready, we'll add an array modifier to duplicate it along the Y axis, creating a row of floorboards. Once that's done, we can duplicate the entire setup and adjust the position to offset the floorboards, giving us a more natural staggered pattern. Now that we have our floorboards arranged, we need to convert them to meshes to apply all the modifiers. Select the floorboards, right click and choose Convert to Mesh. Then right click again and select Join to combine them into a single object. At this point, we want to separate the floorboards into individual pieces to work better with our geometry nodes set up. Enter edit mode by pressing tab. Select all the geometry, go to the mesh menu, choose separate, and then select by loose parts. Now that the floorboards are individual objects, they still share the main parent's pivot point, which isn't ideal. So in object mode, select all the floorboards, right click and choose set origin, then origin to geometry. This gives each board its own pivot point, which is crucial for the effect we're going to create. Next, we need to organize our scene by putting all the floorboards into a collection. Create a new collection and drag all the boards into it. After that, hide the collection and add a plane to the scene, which we'll call floor controller. With the plane selected, switch to the geometry nodes workspace and click new to create a new node tree. You can name this node setup, animator, or something similar as this will be the core of our construction-like animation effect. Now let's begin building our node setup. First, we'll need to add a collection info node. This is where we'll bring in our floorboards collection. Once you've selected the collection, make sure to enable separate children. The setting allows us to treat each floorboard as an individual piece. Also, switch the mode from object to relative. This ensures that the positions of the floorboards are handled relative to the collection's origin, making the animation easier to control. Next, let's take the collection input and connect it to the group input. This will allow us to adjust these parameters directly from the modifiers tab, making it easier to animate and tweak later on. We'll dive deeper into that in a bit. Now let's add a rotate instances node. This is where we'll start to see our geometry node setup come to life. After that, bring in a magic texture node to introduce some randomness into the animation. Connect the fact output of the magic texture to a map range node. Then take the result from the map range node and connect it to a combine XYZ node, which we'll plug into the rotation input of the rotate instances node. The combine XYZ node lets us control each axis individually. We can adjust these later, but for now, let's drag the 2max input of the map range node into the group input, so we have easy access to it from the modifiers tab. And don't forget to connect the output of the rotate instances node back into the group output. This is where we'll start to see the effect. Now, as you adjust the modifier, you'll notice some random rotation happening on the x-axis. To make things more intuitive in the modifiers tab, let's rename the inputs. In the geometry nodes workspace, press N to bring up the site menu. Double click on the input you want to rename since this one controls rotation. Let's call it rotator. Now let's keep the momentum going. Next, we'll add a scale instances node and connect it to the output. We'll need another map range and combine XYZ node. So let's duplicate the ones we already have. Connect the combine XYZ node to the scale input of the scale instances node and link the value from the map range node to the magic texture. Here's an important detail. We need to add a value of one to both the Y and Z axis in the combine XYZ node because a scale of zero would make the objects invisible. Also make sure to set the two min value in the map range node to one. Adjusting these parameters will directly influence the scale of your collection. And we'll dive deeper into refining these adjustments shortly, but first let's move on to the translate instances node. Just like before, we'll need a map range and a combine XYZ node, so go ahead and duplicate those, then hook them up to the translation input. This will allow us to fine tune the positioning to make sure everything is centered and aligned properly. When you move these parameters, you will see that they move with a random position per instance. This is because of the magic texture, so ensure that's hooked up. You can experiment by swapping the output to connect with the Z axis instead of the X axis and observe the different effects it creates. However, for now, let's focus on setting the min and max values to zero and ensuring that the combine XYZ values are all set to zero. This will return everything to its original position where your objects are initially placed. We're almost finished with our node setup, so let's keep going and get everything in place. Once we've completed the setup, we can revisit and fine tune the controls to transform this into a truly powerful tool for your project. 
We can add a subdivide node to our setup. It's not essential right now, but you'll see its benefit shortly. Next, we'll bring in a realize instances node. This node is important because it converts our instances into actual geometry, allowing us to manipulate them further down the node tree. After that, we'll add a set position node. Pull out the position input and connect it to a vector rotate node. Now, we need another position node, but this time we'll use the read position node. Connect that to a math multiply node and then connect the output to the angle input on the vector rotate node with the position going into the vector input. Make sure to change the rotation type to the x-axis and you'll notice your floorboards start to move in an interesting way. Now let's revisit the subdivide node. Increasing the subdivision level makes our effect smoother and cleaner. You can also add a set shade smooth node for an even smoother appearance. If you adjust the value of the math node, you'll see the effect change dynamically. At this point, we have full control over the rotation, scale, location, and even the curving of our collection. Now would be a great time to bring all the key inputs into the group input, making them easily accessible in the modifiers tab. Grab the two max values from the map range nodes and place them in the group input, ensuring you name them clearly for scale, rotation, and so on. Don't forget to include the value from the math node to control the curving effect, as well as the subdivide level in case the mesh needs a bit more smoothness. With everything set up, we can switch over to layout mode and start experimenting with our new setup in the modifiers tab. First, let's navigate to the point in the timeline where we want the animation to end. Once there, press I over each of the key parameters to set keyframes for their current values. Next, go back to frame zero and adjust the parameters to your liking. After making the adjustments, hover over the parameter and press Y again to add new keyframes. Personally, I like to play around with the rotation, transform, and curve parameters before bringing the scale down to zero, making the objects appear as if they're emerging from nothing. As you can see, the scale didn't make it disappear, so I'll quickly jump back into the geometry nodes and connect the Y and Z axis directly to the scale group input. Back in layout mode, I can hit play to watch our setup come to life. I'll also adjust the timeline's end frame to 60, so the animation loops smoothly. Now that the node setup is complete, I wanna show you how easy it is to apply this to any object or design you have. For this example, I'll hop into Blender Kit and grab a chair model. Uh, first, let's hide our floor controller to keep things tidy, then place the chair wherever you like in the scene. Next, add a new plane, go to the Modifiers tab and select Geometry Nodes. All you need to do now is choose the Animator Node Setup from the drop-down menu. Instantly, all of our parameters are available for use. Don't forget to hide the collection of the original chair once you have your new controller set up. Since the chair is already in a collection, I just select that collection and follow the same steps as before to set up the animation. Now it's time to start having some fun with the parameters. You can add keyframes to animate your chair, bringing it into the scene with a cool effect that would typically take much longer to create manually. Remember, you can always go back into your geometry nodes setup, add new group inputs, tweak different nodes, and truly customize it to fit your vision. This setup is really versatile and can be easily adjusted to make it uniquely yours. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video.